Uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother, just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Now, it is an absolutely stonkingly hot day out there today. Look, it's England and it's hot. I know what you're thinking, Barry, it's England, it always rains there, what are you on about? But it does, actually you do have hot days sometimes, and me, Mrs Barry and Phoebe are on our way to a picnic in just a jiffy, so I thought I'd make my own little bit of grub to take along, rather than just some sandwiches, I'm going to go a bit crazy. I haven't made sausage rolls yet, but I'm not a massive fan of pork filling in the sausage roll, so I'm going to turn it around a little bit and use chicken, okay? So these are all the ingredients you're going to need. Hit pause and write them down, it is a ridiculously quick video, I'm in a bit of a rush, so I'm just going to do this and we're going to see how it comes out, and if not... I will be buying sandwiches. But this is all I've got. I've just got some chicken mince, which is actually a little bit hard to get hold of. So if you can't get hold of that, maybe use turkey mince and have some cranberry filling instead. You know, go crazy, do your thing. You know, you know what to do, yeah? Got some salt and pepper there in my little pot holder. Some sage, which I'm gonna chop up. A packet of 100 grams of breadcrumbs, onion, which I'm gonna chop. And this is some puff pastry, which I've rolled out nice and thin, like so. See that? Not too thick, not too thin. And that is my evidence there. So I've just rolled that out. No, no point making it, just use that stuff there. It's nice and easy and you're never going to fail with it. So, what I'm going to do is just grab a big bowl, prepare the onion, just finely dice that, chop up the sage a bit, chuck all that in together, season it, in the middle of that, then in the oven, and we'll see what they come out like. So, uh, let's get cracking, shall we? Picnic-tastic. Right, guys, first thing we're going to do is chop up our onion. Ooh, see that? Onion, onion. I've never told you this before, but one person who's reminded me constantly to keep a sharp knife when cutting is Mrs. Barry's dad. He used to be a chef, and his name is Dick, so hi, Dick. Um, I made the pun, and you know, I know you're probably thinking it, about men's genitalia, Dick. You know, don't do that. I even made the mistake once of buying him some underwear that said, hello, my name is Dick on it, and, um, well... Our relationship's never been the same since. But he and many other chefs will tell you that it's really important to keep a sharp knife. It's gonna help you not get, if you have a blunt knife, it's gonna actually make it more prone to having like, losing a limb like, like that, walking around with a finger like that, not good. Sharp knife, sharpen it before and after if you can, makes preparation a lot easier. So let's just dice our onion, shall we? And um, cheers, Dick. See what I'm finding, guys, is with a sharp knife, it just makes it so much easier. You just like work your way for an onion like that. Look, it's literally just falling through. I can even look away like that and do it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not that good yet. I will cut a finger off. But keep your knife sharp. I can't say that and hesitate it anymore. Got my onion nice and diced there now. Let's move on to chopping up our sage, shall we? Sage-tastic! Okay, so with sage, all I'm doing is grabbing a bunch of it all together like that. And again, just getting my knife and working it straight down in lines. Like so. So it's finely chopped. I can really smell. I don't know. I need smell of vision. Hopefully one day that will be invented. But if I go right in like that, it's still a bit big. I'm just going to be working along it still to get it nice and fine. But the smell is sage tastic. I'm saying tastic a lot today, aren't I? Sorry. Let's move on. Tastic. Right, so that sage is all nice and chopped. Just working it up and down like so. The onions, as we know, are ready. Grab yourself a big bowl like that. Let's just do the breadcrumbs first, so nice and easy. Pour that all in. Make sure, guys, you've got clean hands for this part. Well, you should always have clean hands anyway. But we're going to get our hands right in the bowl now. It's going to be all scrunchy, get all messy. Kind of fun, actually, yeah? Well, I'm excited anyway. So, yeah, breadcrumbs in there. Let's get our chicken mince. Ugh. Pour it in there. And hopefully the wrapper from the pastry doesn't want to go in there. Oh, no. Oh, I'll leave that to one side. I'm only making it for a couple of us. So, we get our hands in there a little bit already. And then we'll start to add in our onions, sage, and then we'll season it with salt and pepper, okay? Right guys, as you've seen, I've given the chicken and the breadcrumbs a mix together already. And look, I can pick it all up in one big piece. It's almost like an organ. Um, yeah, anyhow, let's pick up our onions and just drop those in like so. You can do it carefully like this and bend your knees if you want and think of classical music while you're doing it. Or you can just go <clears throat> like techno. Sage, straight that in there like that. Wow, that is looking like a festival of colour already. Can you see that? I'm loving that. Right, a little bit of salt and pepper. My little funky mix I've got. Pepper, salt, and now hands in again. Really go to work on it. You remember when we made homemade hamburgers before? It's exactly the same theory. Bond it all together. You, my friends, are the cement mixer, and this is your cement. And the bowl's the mixer, yeah? I'll carry on. It smells good, by the way. 
Right then guys, just putting the bowl to one side and that is our lump of chicken, onion, sage, breadcrumb mixture. Not forgetting the salt and pepper. I wanted to put it into a funny shape like that, which kind of looks like maybe like an iceberg from Titanic. I don't know, just to show you how manoeuvrable that is, okay? When you get your hands in there, it's kind of like Play-Doh. You can do whatever you want with it. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, what I've also done is also got an egg and just broke it into a bowl and whisked it up like that because we're going to brush it on our pastry. And speaking of the pastry, I've just done one line down there. What I'm going to do now is roll this out nice and flat and spread it along one of these bits down the middle and then the other bit is going to be almost like a roof. I'm going to close it on top, okay, and seal it with our egg mixture. Prick it with a fork around the edges, whack it in the oven, and as Gordon Ramsay would say, done. <laughs> yeah, so let's do it. Kaboom, so that is all on there like that. You can see I've got a bit around the edge there and what I'm going to do, I have made one heck of a mess of my kitchen today, guys. I do apologise, I'm in a bit of a rush, as you know. Anyway, let's carry on. All I'm going to do is grab my egg yolk and just sort of brush around the edges. It's kind of like going to work like a glue Okay, just around there, so when we slap on our roof on top of it, it's going to stick down well. So just work your way around the edges. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so you've worked the edges. Um, when I say worked, I'm not sort of like talking about working like on a pole or anything like that, and that sounds kind of rude, but anyway, let's just pick up our other pastry lid and layer it on top. Make sure this isn't too high, obviously, when you lower it like that, you can see there is some height on it. If it's any higher than that, then you're not going to have enough width on your roof to seal it, okay, and that is important. So let's just push the edges together, and then we'll finish it off with a fork, but then we'll also go around it with egg, okay? So it's all good, I hope. Okay guys, this is my first attempt after just sealing it, just pinching it together with my thumb and finger. We're gonna go back to that in just a jiffy, but what I have been doing is just grabbing some more of the egg mixture and just giving it a one coat, almost like you're painting a room in your house, but obviously um, when you're painting a room in your house, it's very important with the touching up, and I'm never ever gonna show you the standard of my painting up there, but, um, get a decorator in. Anyhow, this is going to give it a nice golden finish and I'm going to prick it with a fork a little bit just along there to get some air out, all good. And now we're going to crimp it a little bit more with the edge of our fork like this to make nice shapes around it. See that? So just work around it. That's going to seal it as well because you don't want anything falling out. Brilliant, so that is all done guys. Crimped edges all the way around. That does look quite flashy. We've got the air holes as you saw me doing just to make sure a bit of steam can go out and it's not just going to go like that. So we're going to put it in the oven now. I hope this works out, otherwise we're going for a muck picnic. And you all know what that means. Let's hope this works. Right then guys, I definitely need to invest in a bigger baking tray. That's now going in the oven on gas mark 7 for 20 minutes, okay? So I'm going to keep my eye on it. It might be a little bit quicker than that, but I'll let you know for peace of mind. So uh, we'll see you in 20 minutes. And I've got some cleaning up to do. Right here then guys, that has been 20 minutes. It's nice and brown on the top. Just to let you know, I put it on the middle shelf to make sure it's all cooked through in the middle, okay? One thing you could have done if you wanted to, if you like your onions a bit softer, you could have cooked them for about five minutes beforehand, but I like mine nice and crunchy. I want that nice texture when I bite into it. Anyhow, let's get it out and let's see what it tastes like. Yes. Wow, that is looking like one gigantic sausage roll. All we're gonna do is let it cool down, cut it lengthways along there, and then across into nice bite-sized chicken pieces. So. Uh, I'm excited. Brilliant, so I've just taken out the tray, there's the evidence there. It's cooled down sufficiently, but it's still a teeny bit warm, but that is how I like my sausage rolls. So, let's grab the knife, right Dick, and cut, yes. Right guys, you can probably see the line down the middle there. That is because I've taken my knife and gone whoosh straight down there, lovely. And now all I'm doing now is just going down the sides, widthways, like so, making little pieces. Lovely jubbly, let me just show you that so you can see it. Check that out. So you can see we're getting some nice big pieces of our chicken bites there. I can't wait to try these. Yeah. Right here then guys, so I've just grabbed a massive plate and piled them up. Obviously gonna seal them in a container in just a jiffy. I'm gonna get right into one of these right now. You can see how big and chunky they are. Mmm. Mmm. Oh wow, that is really full of flavour. Ooh, I've got to be careful. There's probably not gonna be very many of those left. Absolutely loving that. Mmm. Excuse me, my mouthful. Nice quick video, super easy snack, perfect for a picnic. If I can make that, absolutely anyone in the world can. Have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on, and I'll see you again next time. Lush. High five!